electronic devices. So let us take a moment to quiet ourselves as we prepare now for our worship. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord is God in the heart.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nation shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, 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 Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? And all Jerusalem with him. Assembling the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set off. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> From the earliest Christian times, the story of the coming of the Magi has inspired artists and poets and Christians uh, of all time. And as we, we look at the story and the tradition as it developed, it's very interesting how Christian uh, piety, Christian faith, uh, creative imaginative reflection has developed the tradition surrounding the Magi. First of all, the Magi, the first time we ever hear of them is, uh, we hear of them in the sixth century before the birth of Christ, one of the great ancient historians, Herodotus, speaks of Magi as a priestly caste among the people known as the Medes, and then the Persians. They were particularly known because of their ability to interpret dreams, to interpret dreams. In time, the term became more broadly uh, associated with people who were considered to be very well versed in secret law and in magic. And if you listen to the word magi, yes, magician, magic. Magi were uh, versed in secret law, and we might speak of them as people who would be known to be magicians. The Magi uh, were, as they, uh, as they come to the story, they are Gentiles from the East, and they come to, uh, because they have seen the light of the star, and they've come to do homage, that is, to worship the child. But, as I say, the story develops. First question is, how many Magi are there? Three. three. Everybody settled on three? Four. Four? Okay. Okay, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't say. It says Magi from the East. And what we see in catacomb paintings, on one hand we see as few as two, four, and in the Eastern of traditions, we find as many as 12 with names associated. Eventually, rather soon, it settled upon three, because you have three gifts. <coughs> and, you know, you 
can't have like an office party where four guys try to get together and sign a card. We'll, we'll take the incense, you know. Or we have four men die and one guy to do a gift, so we got a cheapskate, you know. So three gifts, three major. Very soon, we know that they become known as kings. So we sing we three kings of, of we're going to sing that somewhere over water, okay, right? So uh, three kings. Well, when did they become kings? Well, if you listen to the psalm, which was saying, Psalm 72, we hear that in those days, kings will come with gifts of tribute from Arabia, from Seba, from the east. They will come with gifts. The a reading from Isaiah speaks of how gifts will come drawn by the light, dromedaries as well. So one of the reasons you have a camel in here you know, is because of the reflection on the reading, the dromedary camel. So we find that those texts, as the tradition grew, the Magi then became kings. And so we see here, for example, the crown on the head of one of the Magi. We find early on, there was uh, also a uh, reflection that the Magi were depicted as reflecting the uh, races of the world. And so we find they presented one of the kings is presented as white. One is presented as very dark uh, skin and black. One is presented as, as brown. And so we have from that early time a reflection of the nation, nationalities, the races of the world. And so the Magi come and they reflect, they uh, embrace all of the nations of the world. And then, of course, there was an attempt to name the Magi. And that comes from very early. And so we find the names, well, there were several different attempts, but one that was settled upon for us is Melchior, Balthazar, and Gaspar. Gaspar. Melchior is presented as an older man with a long white beard generally. Balthazar is presented as a man with a very dark skin complexion with a very heavy beard normally. And Gaspar is presented as a uh, ruddy and a kind of a brownish uh, uh, color to his skin. Again, we find that the development of the tradition, people reflecting on the uh, the story of the Magi being so important, it would be natural for uh, the Magi to then be named. And finally, from very early on, the gifts of the Magi took on a significance. The, the gifts were gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Well, we find early on, even by the second century, reflection that gold is brought because he is a king. Incense is brought because incense is burned in worship of God. Myrrh, which is an oil, is brought because he will be embalmed and he will die for us. He will die for us. And so we find that um, the, the tradition itself, in, in different ways, reflects not only the Magi, but who it is they come to worship. Now, having said all of that, let's not lose sight of the story in its place in Matthew's Gospel, because it has a significant role to play. The stories we find in the beginning of Matthew's Gospel and also we find similar stories, all different, in Luke's Gospel surrounding the birth and early childhood of Jesus, which preface in those Gospels the story of the ministry of Jesus. Those stories, we call them the infancy narratives. Those narratives play a, a special role. They are like overtures, overtures in an opera or um, Perhaps we're more familiar with the old traditional <coughs> Broadway shows like Rogers and Hammerstein, Lerner and Lowe, or whatever, where you would have an overture. 
I remember a number of years ago, I went to see the revival of uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. And as we sat there for the, uh, the beginning of the overture, everybody there was there was all humming along or singing along with the different melodies which would be developed as the show unfolded. The same is true of these stories. The infancy stories <coughs> strike chords. They begin to point to what will be developed, who the child is, what he will do, what it all means. And so with that in mind, when we look at the story of the Magi, a couple of things develop. First, we find that the religious authorities, Herod, and the high priest, the chief priests, and the scribes, who will be the movers in the passion story to destroy Jesus, to kill him, they do not come at the news that the child born, the king of the Jews, has come. They know the scriptures, but they don't respond. The Magi, who are Gentiles, they're not Jews, they are the first to come and they pay him homage, a word which means they worship him. They worship him. This prefaces what will happen in the gospel. The authorities will not accept him. Many in Israel will not accept him. But the Gentiles, Gentiles will come. The Gentiles will see the light and come. Not only fulfilling what we hear in the prophet Isaiah, but actually revealing far more. For Isaiah had a picture in his mind of now that Israel was restored, light would shine forth and people would be drawn from nations to the light. But what Paul tells us in Ephesians, really helping us to understand what this all means story of the Magi is, no, even more than that. The coming of Christ reveals that God's desire is for all people, that God's salvation is extended to all people. It is not as if Israel or the, the, the people of Israel are the heirs to salvation and everybody else is second class, but rather all people Jews and Gentiles, and from a Jewish point of view, that's it. There's nobody else. That's everybody. Are co-heirs. Co-heirs. What is revealed is how God's love, God's embrace, is to all people. God's salvation is to all. Earlier in Matthew, again, Jesus, uh, as Joseph is told about what has happened with Mary and the child that will be born. We're told his name is Jesus because, give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. His people is revealed not to be Israel, but Israel and Gentiles, everyone. This is revealed and as Paul says, has not been seen before. Nobody knew this. Nobody expected this. This is the wonder of what has happened. That God's salvation reaches out and embraces all. God knows no distinction. God embraces all. Now, on this day, then as we reflect on the embracing, all embracing love of God that knows no limits, that knows no distinction that discriminates against no one. It's good for us to stop and think about ourselves, to look at ourselves. I always do this on this day. It's a good day to stop and think. Do I try in my life to do the same? I remember years ago, I went to visit a friend of mine from way back from high school and college, and he and his wife and family, they live in South Jersey. So this is back in about 1985 or something like that. So I went, drove down to South Jersey. I got out of the car, and the first thing that happened was I was assaulted by the odor 
of petroleum. I said, whoa, how do you live here with that? You know, I, I, said to, I said to Jim, I said, boy, that's strong. I got there on Friday, I left on Sunday, and you know what? I didn't smell it anymore by Sunday. It was in the air, but I didn't smell it. I didn't notice it. We live in a society in a world where people draw lines. They make distinctions. And those distinctions and those lines lead to fear. They lead to hatred. They lead to violence. That's where we live. We breathe that in. And after a while, we don't realize what it can do to ourselves. And this is a day to stop. Not the only day, but one that make, should make us stop to look into our hearts. To pray for the grace to root that out. We cannot be followers of Christ who has come to reveal the love of God to embrace all without discrimination if we do the same. Because of the way a person looks, because of the way a person sounds, because a person is a man or because a person is a woman, because of their sexuality, because of their nationality, because of anything. We can't do that. Look at the figure of Jesus on the wall. Take a good look. His arms are out in embrace. To embrace, to hug those who would come to him. And those who would come to him must seek to embrace as well. Must seek to embrace others as well. We need to work at that. We need to work at that constantly. And that's what we should reaffirm or recommit ourselves to do today. As the light of the star revealed that God seeks to embrace all, to gather all to his heart without distinction, that we who would be his followers, we who would be his disciples, must allow that light not only to shine in our hearts so that we might see the darkness we need to clear, but we should be more and more the beacons of that embracing light in this world. Let us pray that on this beautiful feast that has captured the imagination of Christians from the very beginning, and will do so for all time, that it might also motivate us to allow the light of God's all-embracing love to shine through us in a world <coughs> so often is darkened by hatred, discrimination, and bigotry. <coughs> Let us pray that God's grace might touch us in a special way this day. Amen. <coughs> Let us together. I believe in one God.
Let us pray that the light of Christ may guide our prayer for all those who are in need. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who, like the Magi, seek Christ, especially for the candidates and catechumens of our parish and of God's church, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those whose lives are put at risk because of the fear and selfishness of the powerful, for members of the world's armed forces, for those who live in societies threatened by war, and for the poor and the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our parish family, that our respect for one another and our care for the poor may give evidence of Christ among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Barbara Nowolowski, had we go. Marilyn Graham, John Murphy, Joseph Volpe, Tom Yonks, Allison Chris, Anna and Lou Russo, that they may be returned to good health, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Rosemary Ennis, that they may see God in whom they hoped, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer intentions book, and the prayers that we keep in our hearts. And for Brother Anthony Scotto, FSC, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you offer to all the light of Christ and his promises of justice and of eternal life. Help those who are most in need of your guidance and your protection. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are still waiting for the calendars to arrive. It may take another week or longer. Thank you for your patience. Do you know what did arrive? We are voting. Please take one. And uh, uh, take a moment for a final blessing to offer. Uh, wish you all a, a most blessed new year, and it might be a time of, of, uh, of blessing and hopefully uh, new light. Uh, just some of the darkness we've been experiencing in these past few days. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Right. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Alright, so we'll give two, three, six angels we have heard on high. Two, three, six. Yeah.